Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. Kat, I'm just going to pop you in right now. We don't All usually... Right, let's do it. Yeah, I know. I don't usually do that, but I'm like, let's just pop you in. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> welcome to the Ghost Girl Diaries podcast. This is for those of you brave enough to join the paranormal circle. Um, I'm doing vampire glam today. You know what I mean? Like, have you seen that viral thing on... Um, TikTok where they did like the red underneath your eye. Have you seen that? Yes. I tried yeah, it. I it I feel that. a little dead. You know what I mean? Like, but it's fine. I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna do it again. Like, I feel like it was appropriate for today's stream, but I don't think I'll do it again. It's a little, you know, like I'm pale enough as it is. But you add the red under, you're like, whoa, yeah. I just like walked out of my coffin, like straight up, you know. So. I, I feel no like I should have called this, like, a vampire lore chat, because I feel like, I mean, I know we're talking about Vlad, but, like, I don't know, I, I have, I've always had a thing for vampires, you know, like, that's, I, isn't that part of, like, the paranormal side of, of stuff? It is, it just piques my interest, you know? Just you know piques your interest. Oh, I like your background, that looks good. Um, oh, thank you, Crystal, for Is that the, the one I got? Is that the one? Yeah! Wow, jeez. I know, isn't it nice? Isn't I like it? the gray tones. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe I need to remove the, the blue tones from behind me. I feel like that makes me look even more, like, dead. I like it, though. Mm. It just, like, glows nice. You so know. I have some tea. Okay, If you jeez. don't mind me divulging into some tea. Get that tea. I mean, get okay. the tea. I live for the tea, okay? Okay. I don't know if all y'all saw, but Zach Bagan's museum... Haunted Museum oh God, posted a picture of the demon house. Okay. And guess what he put back in there? What? Take a while, guys. Put back the mannequin. It. The mannequin. He put the mannequin back. Yeah. So, um, I think he took your advice <laughs> and put it back. So that's that's the tea for, for the moment. So, so he had he there. had his little baby fit and got mad at me and. Um, mm -hmm. Welcome to the life of executive producers and uh, being friends as EPs. And you know, I think at the end of the day, like, we're, we're just, like, other people and we fight, too. And, you know, like, friends fight. And um, we both, I know I'm laughing because I'm like, hmm, I don't know how to address this. Uh, we both do, like, really, really respect each other at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Like, we really do. Um, and, like, I'm probably one of the only people on Earth that can, like, criticize him. And he actually, like, takes the information and, like, he got upset at first. He's an Aries. Like, he got upset. And then he calmed down. And he's like, okay, I'm going to change it. So, um, yeah, no. I mean, like, I think people like to start, like, a, a fight thing between us. Like, they want us to have, like, a thing, a fight. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, we are rivals. Even though I'm on YouTube, like, I have, I have millions of views. Like, we're still rivals. But um, I don't know. I feel like we've always had that back and forth thing of like sometimes fighting sometimes, you know, like, and I, it's probably a power struggle because of what we both do, you know, mm -hmm. but absolutely. absolutely. no hate. I don't have, I don't have an <laughs> interesting cat. Oh, well, maybe I'm not boloed anymore. Who knows? You know what I mean? <laughs> Bolo. Okay. Unbolo. <laughs> Marco Polo okay. Bolo, you know what I'm saying? Like it's fine. Marco Polo Bolo, I <laughs> cried laughing when you put that in group chat. Oh like, man. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, no, I don't have. You know, it's funny. I'm glad he took my advice. You know, like I, I want success for the museum. I want success for him. But there was, there was some strange things in there, and it did. It was weird. It was really. Yeah. Building a wall, and so there was some weird stuff. So yeah, I hope he took my advice. You know, it was I wasn't meant to piss him off to kingdom come but you know it's okay we all get emotional 
we it's you know quarantine's been rough on all of us you know like what can i say other than that you know long year it has i'm really Mm -hmm. glad i'm vaccinated because like now i feel confident enough to go eat at a restaurant and i can maybe you know be social again someday you know no me too i want to go out to vegas soon oh yeah you know aren't you are you when are we doing the thing oh we don't know yet right now yeah i'm i mean whenever you're ready i'm ready it's been a long three weeks i guess we can chat about that for a second so um i've been in like negotiations for three weeks which is what's new i'm always in negotiations but um when they get real deep i'm like i have removed myself from the social media world and (laughs) Um, I haven't, I've hardly posted, but you know, I've, Mm -hmm. I've said in the past when you, when I don't post, it's usually cause like some, some good stuff's going on behind the scenes and there's definitely been some good stuff going on behind the scenes and I'm finally coming back to my body most recently, but yeah, I've been tired cause that was, it's been been a long month or two for sure. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm still not completely rested, you know? Yeah. Like I, it is, it takes brain cells and like, woo true well and it's kind of like flying by the seat of your pants in an organized way it's kind of like the it's, best way to encapsulate the whole thing you know? yeah you're on call like 24 7 basically for answering questions and whatnot and you're just like Ugh, my brain hurts oh, where am I? oh uh, like, well and then you like get off your like routine we were both off of our routine because you were helping me with it and so like i i'm like today's the first day i was finally able to exercise in like mm-hmm. three weeks so i feel really like out of you know what i mean like whoa And I hate that because, like, I live by my routine, don't you? It's true. And then, like, I feel when you get back into it, you're like, oh, wow, why why wasn't I on this routine train for a while? Because it just feels so good, you know? Yeah, but But when you're doing the negotiations and whatever, we're, like, (laughs) dead. (laughs) We're, like, half alive. (laughs) You know, so like, true. it is. Like, uh, there were days Kat and I were both calling each other, like, are you okay, bitch? <laughs> no, I'm not. Sometimes I love it when we, we're in that mode together because sometimes we're just on the phone for three hours and we just don't say anything. We're just there for moral support because I mean, there's an unspoken understanding uh, of what's going on. Yeah, know? there was a few days we were, like, on the phone, on t- like, with each other on TikTok, not even <laughs> saying anything. We're just, like... <laughs> Are you okay? You there? Yep. Just scrolling through social media. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The trauma, man. So, True, yeah, it's been a good three right. weeks, but tired. How do you feel? Are you rested up now? Uh, yes. I mean, I've been on Vegas time for three years. Let's be <laughs> I'm sure. I feel like I'm just always going to be messed up, but it's fine. Yeah, so. it's true. Kat, like, texted me the other night. It was, like, midnight her time, and I was like, "Are you, what are you doing? Mm, I don't know. Just up. She's like, I'm wide awake, and I'm like, but there's, yeah. we don't, we're not working this time of night. She's like, I don't know, I'm just awake. So, it's 9 p.m. <laughs> when did you get in? So, okay, vampires was a thing because, um, I don't know, I've just always been into vampires. Have you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Twilight, all that good stuff. What was I'm your like first them. thing that like re- you remember of like vampire stuff that you were into? Was it just because of Halloween, or was there like a specific movie? It was Halloween, and Nosferatu was a movie that we watched a lot at home mm-hmm. <laughs> when I was a kid, so that's kind of what got me into it. I was very fascinated as a kid, apparently, by Nosferatu's hands. Is that an and, like, opera? Fingers. What is that? No, no, he's a the vampire. It's an old black and white movie. Oh, is that the one where he, like, he comes up out of, like, the, he did, like, the levitation thing out of the grave? Okay. That old school black and white movie. I don't think I've ever and seen that. Isn't that horrible? Really? Yeah. Yeah. His nails are like freakishly long, mm-hmm. and I just had a weird obsession with that when I was younger. I was like, I don't understand. But How I like it. Oh. You're just so like, I'm just like looking at them. So creepy. Yeah. Oh my god. I don't. I don't know. Well, I mean, I think Elvira always embodied kind of like the vampirist sort of image, and like my aunt was really yeah. into her when I was like little itty bitty, like three and five years old. So I remember seeing her on TV. Um, but then as you get older, I think what I... I wasn't supposed to watch um, Interview with the Vampire with Brad Pitt. And oh. I was like... I think I, don't, I think I was in my teens. And I, my mom was like, don't you dare watch that. Um, and I was like with, with a friend's house. And it felt so like forbidden. We weren't supposed to watch it. But I was like, whoa, vampires are like a thing. But then you like go forward and you like talk about real life vampires. Like Vlad decide Like... When Ghost Adventures had the one dude, Father Sebastian, with his consort on there, that's just, like, a little too far for me. You know what I'm saying? 
that, that was a little freaky. Well, it is. I, I don't like, of course, like, that's the feminist thing in me coming in of, like, I don't like um, the whole woman being, like, his meal. I think that's offensive. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, yeah. It's like you're. She's like she's still, you know, walking a couple of steps behind the man. And I'm like, no, I'm not. No one's gonna consort me. I'm not gonna take that title. I'm not anybody's meal. And I hope that you all had like HIV tests just to make sure because I'm not sure if consuming human fluids like that is like the safest thing to do. Um, so, so I, yeah, I think that's a little far. You know what I mean? Like, like there's a line, and that that was the line. There's a whole community, vampire community in Salem. Like, like, do they actually, like, the thing? Like, they do the thing? I mean, no, I guess no one really knows, but they do, like, where they have the fangs and everything. Some of them actually get them surgically done, or they'll get them, like, pointed and, like, Okay, done. I've gotten fit for, like, the fangs, but they're the kind that, like, go in and out. You know, like, you take... Yeah. Why would you want to walk around with that? Just, I know. A lot of people yeah. do that. I don't... Okay, cool. I mean, but why? You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, but yeah, I think. There's a. Go ahead. There's a shop in Salem um, called Vamp Fangs, and it's literally that. So what? Like, <laughs> like you go in and get fit custom. for the fangs. Yeah, like it's custom, um, like fangs, but they also sell like merch. So they sell like black masks with like vamp fangs on them and stuff, and it's like cute. Okay, that I, I can't. I would wear a mask. I would wear a vampire mask. Yeah. I would not have fangs. <laughs> like that just feels uncomfortable and just unnecessary you know what I mean it's wrong. It's wrong. I have seen people my my older I have an older cousin um and I'm not gonna say his name or he'll kill me but um when he was younger like I think in his like 20s he got into like the vampire culture thing and he yeah. um he was wearing like temporary fit fang things and I was like why but whatever you know and I remember they would do like rituals and they would like Ugh. it's just too far it's too like, far. About it, I'm like, Ooh. Well, that'd be cool for like Halloween, like a cost, you know, like, but whatever yeah. floats your boat, I guess. I don't know, as long as you're not hurting anybody. Don't be eating people, okay? <laughs> Jesus, cats. <laughs> cats, like, I'm just gonna okay. say it, okay? Do like the blunt disclaimer. Don't bite people. Biting people's wrong. But we look, if people. they're into that thing, go for it. As long as there is mutual, okay. like. You know, yeah, agreement. Yeah. Okay. There needs, there needs to be an NDA and then consent. Okay. Oh, or like, consent and then an the NDA. Oh, you know? I need to sign an NDA first. <laughs> God. I'm dead. Messed up. Uh, messed up. It is. But, like, it is cool, though, the vampire. I am into the vampire culture thing. In fact, like, another, like, side note is, like, I play World of Warcraft and there's a new section that's in WoW that's like yeah. all vampire coven stuff and I, I joined it with my pally and um it's really cool it's just it's like underground tombs and stuff like that so going into like vlad and stuff but okay back up where did i really get into vampires so i saw like my first real movie was probably um you know interview with the vamp like really you know vampire culture but like yeah. i was obsessed with twilight for sure for sure yeah. i i got the books first before the movies came out and um, I can't remember. I think I, I was in my, like, early 20s or, like, late teens when the books came out. So I was, like, prime age for that. Like, that was my generation, okay? And um, I got the first book. I remember my friends getting the first book. And I was like, that's a big-ass book. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, make that merch. That's a big ass book. And they were like carrying this book around because they were so obsessed with it they couldn't put it down. And I, they were like, "You have to buy it." And it was like literally, it's like a four inch book. Like Jesus, I don't know, you know. And yeah. so I finally broke down and I got the first one and I was like obsessed with it, obsessed. And yeah. then like I literally read the first book in like two days. It was crazy. And yeah. then I went and got the next book, and it was gone in two days, like, literally. So I was obsessed. And um, I was not Team Jacob, probably because I'm Native American. Uh, I mean, like, you know, he's hot or whatever, but I was definitely Team... I- what were you? I was Jacob. <laughs> okay, of course you were, Kat, okay? Of course. Okay, I don't know why. Okay, Beauty and the Beast, love the Beast. Oh, okay, I just, I just love the Beast. 
Oh that's not a hint at anything. I'm just saying. That's a hint. All right. <laughs> no. A yeah. No jokes about you know animal loving. Okay. But like. Okay. Someone said no. uh, Queen of the Damned with Aaliyah. That was really good too. Yeah. yeah that so was good. good. She. It's a shame she she passed. But um. So yeah. Then the films came out and I was obsessed with the films. I went every single time at midnight. I was that person. I was that mm. person waiting in line. And I was that person that, like, had all the Team Edward shit on. Like, yeah, that was me. I was this, I was that girl. I was, like, the, and it's crazy because, like, I remember going and there's, like, literally, like, 100 people in line waiting for the movies. And yeah. I was, like, one of the few that was Team Edward. <laughs> like, literally everybody was Team Jacob. Hello. Uh, <laughs> so we would have <laughs> had, like, a rivalry. You know what I mean? Yeah. Although hey, Bella's, Bella was a little bit... Ugh, you know, got on my nerves a little bit sometimes. So sometimes, I mean, yeah. Sometimes when to slap her and be like, grow, grow a pair, okay, get a backbone, all right, ho. Like you're gonna be I fine. Know. Yeah, pretty much. So let's let's go on to Vlad. You did a lot of this uh, research with exactly. Elfie, actually. So mm -hmm. first of all, when Vlad Vlad took place in Transylvania, which is obviously Romania. I, I'm scared to go to Romania. Like, this is one of my, like, bucket list locations for sure. But, like, I've said this before, Romania is known for having a lot of loose dogs on the road. Yeah. And I'm scared to death I'm going to, like, fly home with, like, 30 stray dogs. Because I probably would have to figure it out. I'd, like, I have to adopt every single dog in this country and they're all going back to Vegas with me. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, All of them at once. It's fine. Just put them in the carry-on. It's true. Great. Like, there's a couple of countries that, like, scare me because I'd, that's what I would do. Like, I think Vietnam, too, they have a lot of strays. Oh, my God. Or else I'd have to go, like, donate, like, $30,000 just to make, like, take this money and rescue all the dogs, okay? Like, just get them off the street. Just put them on a chopper, okay? Send them to my, here's my address. <laughs> here's my address. Send them over to <laughs> Vegas. We're good to go. I've got a farm. Not, I really don't have a farm. Um, yeah. Okay, let, let's let's chat about Vlad. So, okay. I mean, I want to get into stats and deets, but, like, he was kind of, like, a messed up person. He was. Like, I mean, Very mental health, maybe? What do you think it was? I, I think it was a mix of that and being betrayed, is mm -hmm. my take on it, mm -hmm. as well, which is not an excuse to be, you know... Violent. Killing people. Okay, this right. is not an excuse. But I do, but based off of what I've read, my theory would be that it was because he was betrayed and that made him just spiral out of control. Right. And I think it was also a, a means of maintaining power because his father couldn't. Um, so that's my take on it. I don't know, man. He did some weird stuff. So I didn't really know, like, the super, super history of this. Also, like, before we get any further, obviously, yeah, like, you know, Dracula was inspired by Vlad. It was, like, um, back in, like, the 1600s or, like, 1700s, some author was, like, looking into different lore, trying to get inspiration. I can't remember his name. Who, who wrote the first book on, on vampires? Um, hmm, that's a good question. Well, there, there's a few of them that came out at the same time. Well, it's the oldest one. Yeah. It's from, like, the 16, 1700, whatever. Anyway, what he did was he went into the history books, found the story of Vlad, the Impaler, and then mm -hmm. turned that into Dracula, which is, like, super interesting because that's how writers get inspired is by, like, real-life events. Um, that's true. But Vlad was dark, man. Like, he had some issues. He had some serious... Yeah. I mean, and he went through some shit, so, okay, you know, give yeah, it to him. It's true. It always comes from something. Yeah, it's kind of like when we talk about serial killers as well, mm -hmm. you know, about their childhood. They all had very similar childhoods. I have, like, know? way too much shit on my desk today, man. <laughs> I'm, like, literally... First of all, I have four drinks on my desk, which is... I'm just... I'm that person. I have, like, a Sprite, a water, and a coffee. I've got oh, okay. issues, man. Jesus, Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's, let's, you do, do a little blurb on what you think about Vlad here and, like, all his stuff. 1431 was a minute ago. Died yeah. in Romania. Yeah, so he was born in Transylvania in 1431 and died in Romania in 1476. So let's see, and he was, like, what, 56, 50, 50, 60 years old, somewhere in there? Around that time, yeah. He's known as Vlad III. His father is Vlad II. And um, 
the third Vlad the third uh, Dracul was the son of the dragon, and they were really um, careful in articles to make sure that like you didn't mix that up with Vlad the second, which was um, the the dragon. I think it is. And um, so I didn't know that part at all. You didn't. Mm-mm. Yeah. And was that like was that her name or was it like a was it like a, of a clan? Like, do you know what it was from? Like the like Dracul. Like yeah, like Dracul. son of Dracul, son of dragon. Like cause... yeah, it's a Latin word because Draco translates to dragon, hmm. and um, they also had that as a part of his induction into the order of the dragon, the father, um, which kind of just like took over the whole name of all of the sons. And um, the Order of the Dragon in itself was created by the Holy Roman Emperor in order to um, be like a defense um, against the Ottoman Empire, which was the Turks. Mm -hmm. Uh, Those were the ones that were trying to take over the castle, Dracula's castle, Vlad's castle, Mm -hmm. um, and his family for generations. It was constant battle. And um, it's really interesting, too, because you think of like dragons, right, with wings, and he literally embodies like what you see in the movies Mm -hmm. of you know, a bat or a big, you know, dragon-like character that comes to life. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, it's, it's well, they probably took the bat part because of the blood-sucking thing, whatever. But I think it would almost be cooler to take on the dragon image, too. Yeah, I think they did a movie with that, um, but they had the dragon on his armor. Mm, I can't remember the name of it, though. Um... I think it was just called Dracula or something. It's amazing how much of this has influenced pop culture, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's huge. It's I huge. mean, this one person. I mean, she did some crazy stuff, obviously. But it's literally mm-hmm. vampires are all, I think, stemmed from him, from this. I agree. I agree. And a lot of it, too, from what I was gathering, in some articles they were saying, like, they could smell whatever, like, what was going on and, like, all the deaths and all the bodies. But there was also another theory that there weren't any deaths and that a priest was actually spreading the rumor that he was killing people in secret. Hmm. And, um, you know, so there's always that two sides to every story when it comes to historic. Well, and let's see, what are we looking at? 1431 era. I mean, obviously he's a child at that time. So 1476 still, that's when he died. Anywhere in between then, I highly doubt there were the best of records were being kept. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's a time where it just wasn't a thing. And yeah. they were probably more concerned with, like you said, holding their land and not being invaded, essentially. Oh, yeah. And it was constant. It was constant. So the Ottoman Empire ended up taking over Constantinople hmm. um, in the middle of Vlad's reign. So this after his father died. Um, and, and at that point, once they took over Constantinople, like, that was huge. Mm-hmm. I mean, they could have taken over anything at that point. So you know, defenses were raised and the battle just got worse. Mm-hmm. It just got worse. The Ottomans just took over everything. Mm-hmm. And that's why they're so famous. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, yeah, it's wild, wild journey for sure. I can't imagine living in that time and it being that bloody and like scary and always having to be on defense. On defense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you'd have to hire people to like be security and like protect your stuff. Now, the second part of the story I didn't realize which was you found out that him and his, Vlad and his younger brother, they were sent to live with the Turks, right, essentially? Mm-hmm. And, like, it was as, like, collateral from their from their father, right? Yeah, so they were sent to the court of the Ottoman sultan, um, essentially as collateral to assure the sultan that their father would support the Ottomans' policies because there were factions within, um, you know, Ottoman history that were trying to essentially form a peace treaty because... It was claimed that the Ottomans didn't want the bloodshed that had been happening. Um, so there were some talk and, you know, movements in regards to a peace treaty. So that was going to be part of the movement of the peace treaty was Vlad's father, which is Vlad II, um, giving his um, youngest and then middle child to uh, the Sultan as collateral and they were there for like years thank you for the cheers guys thank you um okay but like what father would just be like you know what i'm gonna send my two sons away Mm -hmm. to a sultan somewhere else like who like i mean i know times were different but like clearly if the father was the one running it with this sort of castle on a hill if you will 
they mm-hmm. had money and power. So why was it, if you're going to send some, why, why, why would you send your children away? I mean, I get why, obviously, but it's just, I don't understand why you would use your own children. Like, wouldn't you be afraid that they would get murdered or something? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's hard to tell, I think, with war stories like that, because essentially what it ended up looking like, you know, going further down the story, um, the Ottomans ended up turning on the father and killing him. Right. So I almost wonder if maybe there might have been something in the back of Vlad II's head that was saying, if I can have my kids survive, take me, I will leave them in your care if you, you know, uphold your promise and then do with me what you will type of scenario. Because it was not much longer after they were dropped off. I think it was like four years after or something um, that the dad ended up becoming like slaughtered and the older brother as well was brutally brutally used blinded buried alive and tortured before that i just don't get i don't i'm so confused why like okay vlad has issues obviously like he he, the reason he really ends up which i don't i know i'm skipping ahead a little bit he gets angry ends up murdering a bunch of the turks obviously on his own ground okay fine Mm -hmm. but like he had to have been so messed up in his head his own father oh, sent yeah. him and his brother away. There had to be some sort of resentment against his parents for what happened. I'm just thinking mm-hmm. about, like, childhood trauma. Then he's right. raised with these people, which, once again, I don't want to jump ahead. But then he returns home eventually and finds out his brother and father are, are, have been slaughtered by the people who raised him. He never got answers then to, from his dad. He, like, what a no. mind F. You know what I mean? Like, it's true. And I'm sure there was some confusion being so young and going into enemy territory mm-hmm. like all you if all you knew and were witnessing with your father and your family being murdered was the ottomans killing you or your family obviously there would be some fr- form of resentment like what did i do wrong to have you send me into enemy's hands and then the dad just pieces out you know so it's true it's very true I, there's probably some messed up daddy issues that were obviously not able to be addressed because he found out he died it's Um, almost like that all of that like between being raised by these people and then his father leaving him then his father being slaughtered which it's interesting how did he end up obtaining the castle back again you know what i mean which doesn't matter i mean there's going to be holes in the story because it's so old but like what like my god the trauma my god like, you don't even... Oh. And mental health was definitely probably not a discussion at this point. Oh, no. Mm-mm. So he no. had to have been so messed up from trauma. Like, this is that thing that I've preached and talked about even in my book, which is, like, man, childhood trauma can literally rewire your brain. Like, actually. Yeah. And, like, if you don't have the capabilities of being able to unf yourself, mm-hmm. like, you're going to put a bunch of heads on a stake in front of your house. You know what I'm saying? It's like, true, and I think it also depends on the emotion that you're dealing with as well when you're having that type of mental health crises because, you know, using Vlad as an example, he was, like, blinded by rage. Mm-hmm. He didn't give up. He did, not, he did not care. Mm-mm. And it, that was very apparent um, because his morals were just completely out the window. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was killing everybody right and left. And in his brain, I think that was his safe space saying that that was almost like avenging his father but he was you know letting out that rage and killing people because of what his father did to him Mm -hmm. and and left him you Mm -hmm. know so it is it's a mixed bag and that's what makes it really twisted and and sick Mm -hmm. for sure i know it's really hard to wrap your brain around because you're just like i'm not saying it's okay what he did or what they did i'm just saying i can you kind of can understand where he comes from when he essentially goes ballistic because he, you know, so now the people that have raised him, that his father sent him away to, have been the ones that have now completely brutally slaughtered his family. And now he's angry with those people. So he probably feels like everybody essentially has turned his back on him. Oh, yeah. And, and he was pretty much the only one left. And, you know, I think the, the twisted thing about it when we're talking about, like, being raised by the Ottomans for a certain aspect of his life. He was literally taught science, tutored in philosophy. Um, highly intelligent, a, highly uh, intelligent. Highly intelligent, became a very skilled um, horseman and warrior. And it's just very telling when the enemy, you know, is teaching you how to be a warrior and he trumps them all and then ends up 
murdering them, Mm -hmm. literally with the skills that they taught him. Um, And maybe he was naturally gifted, who knows? But um, I can't imagine what that must feel like to have finally been released, told that your father and your older brother the year prior to being released were brutally murdered. And you're left there being like, what the hell is going on? But what's the point of the Ottomans taking him and his brother in? Educating them, training them as like actual warriors. When they know they've murdered his family and then release... What was the point of that? I don't know. Then they released him? What was the... You know what I mean? Like, why? Like, was it to purposely, like... Like, why would you put that much time and effort in, like, educating and, like, informing this person... And creating a little warrior, and then you release him to be like, oh, by the way, we murdered your family. Was it for, like, purpose mental torment? I don't know. I don't know. It's hard because it's, you know, there are holes in it. There, There's holes in the story, and it makes you wonder if it was the people that took him in or if it was a different faction, if mm-hmm. the dad was somewhere else in a different, you know. Well, obviously, I think we can say his dad or father was involved in some, like, sketchy shit. Yeah. So I mean, oh, yeah. I doubt that it was just with the Ottomans, in my op- in my opinion. Like he probably had some sketchy shit going on with other clans, and and who knows, right? Probably, so, probably. But yeah, it's it's just it's sick. It's sick. The whole thing is sick and twisted because it's true. Like, why would you waste six or seven years or eight years? I think it was, you know, taking these people in when you're just murdering their family behind their back. I don't. I don't understand. And his dad was killed, so, like, Vlad II was killed in a swamp? Yeah, he was killed in a swamp. What a way to go. Yeah. But if he was so powerful, too, how did he end up getting in the hands of them? I don't know. I I almost think, based just, like, thinking about old war stories and things like that, that he thought maybe he could win over a certain group to help fight with him. Mm-hmm. And they ended up turning on him or whatever, you know, and he became a target Mm -hmm. and easy prey for the enemy. Mm -hmm. So, but it's hard to tell because, again, of of the holes. So that's when you have to put into play your own kind of story as to what what you think might have happened. Well, and you you have to look at, obviously, this huge castle is, like, ginormous. It's still standing today. To be in, what, 14, the 1400s, whenever it was built? How much money that took, which with money or a lot of money takes a lot of power, takes a lot of skill, takes a lot of, unfortunately, we know with money and people, even in this day and age, money with people with money are people with power and they like to take advantage of others and they like to do sketchy shit. So once again, what, what, how did he obtain that home? How did he obtain the money and the skills he had? But he must have known instinctively, like, almost, like, to send his children away. And if he didn't, they would have may have been murdered as well. That's what I'm thinking. That That is what I'm thinking. Um, because that would really be the only rational, you know, move to make in that Wait, situation. why else would you just send... He had more than... He had other children. The yeah, other son was... Four, four, four kids. And the two survived, and that was it. So it's, like, it's weird... It's like he, he knew. Like, what? why else would you just send your kids away? Mm-hmm. And especially to the enemy? Why did he trust the enemy thinking, like, they weren't going to just take the kids and murder them? That's true. The whole it's thing true. is strange. I mean, once again, this is. is cultural differences. We're talking, you know, over 100 years ago. Or no, I mean, obviously, a few hundred oh. years ago. Yeah. But who knows what was going on and why they did it and why they did things the, the way they did then, you know? It's true, and there was even another story um, or theory while he... Because when he entered the space of the Sultan, Mm -hmm. those, like, eight years disappeared. I could not find anything as to what happened. There were no letters. There was nothing you could find about what happened. So there was a second theory that, according to some accounts, that Vlad may have been in prison and tortured during that time. Like, as a child. Yeah, like when he was put in the sultan's care Mm -hmm. and that he witnessed other people being impaled by the Ottomans. Mm -hmm. And that's when, and that would make more sense. I guess that would be the more like logical answer that would make sense. But I don't know, like I feel like the other aspect of him being tutored and taken 
you know, under these people's wings and then being let go and told you're fucked. Like, your whole family. <laughs> like, literally. It's true. Like, I mean, that's so sick. I feel like that's more sick than someone being tortured. Well, that's what I mean. Was it, like, a purposeful mental torment? Because it sounds like it was. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, the Ottomans were some smart, conniving people, in other words. And, unfortunately, they ended up dying at the hands of someone that they... He learned it from them, essentially. Law the Third, right? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I don't want to skip over too much because we have a bunch of stuff in here. Um, so he was ended, he ended up released. Obviously, he found out his um, dad and brothers were obviously horribly murdered. Um, and then this was at some point what, like, triggered his trauma. And yeah. then he returns back, and then he becomes the new ruler, essentially. Yeah. So he... I guess that would kind of fill in the gap, but there's still no full story right. as to how he regained his seat. Lots but of holes. Yeah, like, he did a campaign to regain his father's seat from the new ruler um, that was there. And um, he ended up, Vlad actually ended up getting his revenge and cut the head off of the person that was, like, watching him Hmm. while he was in captivity. Um, And it was this whole, like, drawn-out... See, now that, to me, sounds like there was some sort of trauma that was going on. It wasn't just... Like, he was being tortured, probably. But once again, how did... Was he, quote, released, or did he escape? That's true. You know, That's like, true. I just feel like there's holes here, and I and I, we're never going to know. Once again, it's, like, up to you to put the puzzle pieces together and believe what you will and what you won't. But, like, mm-hmm. why would you have a child and be... And obviously, he's seen some shit. How else did he learn this stuff? That's true. And then did he really... Did he, was he released, or did he just tell everyone he was released... So that they didn't, like, return him back or something. You know, was his brother released with him? There is no account of it. See? Which is why I think you're correct in him escaping. Mm-hmm. Because he was the only one left. He was the only one left. Interesting. Yeah. And he did several attempts to try to kill those people. 1456, I think, was the next one because he was released in 1448, I believe. Or escaped, however, you know, the interpretation is. See, and, and this um, is the crazy part to me, though, is that you have, like, the Vlad the Impaler, and there's, everybody's like, oh, yeah, he did messed up stuff, he killed, like, an entire, like, you know, war, like, uh, what would you call it, um, a military, I guess, essentially, you could call it, like, military, he, yeah, actually, yeah, but, but it's, it's never told that there's, like, a serious story behind it, like, he had some serious revenge to take out on these people, If he was kidnapped, if he was tortured, if he had to escape, they brutally murdered his family. They were also murdering people in the town that he was from, too, as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Townspeople, merchants. And the most messed up thing, and and this is me jumping a little bit ahead, is he would write letters of killing those people. Mm -hmm. Like, he was proud to say at the end of it all that he killed, like, over 20,000 people. No, that was Vlad, though, right? Yeah, that was Vlad. Yeah. That was Vlad. Messed up. Well, you know, he had some trauma, you know? Like, back in the day, there wasn't laws, and he was the law, and he just kind of took it in his own hands, you know what I'm saying? He the law, you know? Like, it's true. Ooh. But it, it's, it's sad, because you do think of, like, once again, money and power, which his family obviously stood on. Mm-hmm. W- what would you do in that case, you know, if your family was brutally murdered? Like, go back to his other brother's murder. He was, like blinded and buried alive isn't that right tortured blinded and buried alive yep yep that's a rough death man i think what was really interesting too which really piques my interest is the cunning that this man had that vlad had um he was really like he knew what to say to entice people to come to him even the enemy he had ottomans coming over his castle constantly in like large groups which makes you think about dracula about how he can you know put a spell on you and make you like not be able to move and you know entice you to come in or invite him in it's kind of like that same story when it comes to dracula Hmm. you know and how they use that because his first instance to like consolidate his power in you know the castle was he invited about hundred about a hundred of ottomans to his his place and um, knowing that he would be challenged because he just enjoyed killing people, um, he had all of them stabbed like as soon as they they arrived and then impaled them. 
while they were like still alive. That was like his first account. He just doesn't care. He just like doesn't care. Nope. Nope. He'll he'll entice him, send a good letter. He wrote lots of letters. That was all over. <laughs> he likes to write, articles. you know? Just like, hey, why don't you come over with some tea? You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be great. And then stab. Yeah. You just come in and you just stab. Stabby stab. Yeah. <laughs> Stabby stab stab. And it was gross too because um they had another instance too where uh, a group of Ottomans came to his castle, which I feel like if you're seeing groups of Ottomans go in and not come out, why would you continue to go? I, I feel true. like just stop now, like just take the hint. Hey, but have not. you seen Sam? <laughs> no, he didn't come back last week. Okay, maybe there's a red flag here. You and know? this other group of Ottomans came in and Vlad asked them to take off their turbans mm -hmm. and they refused to take off their turbans. And he was like, okay, well, if you don't want to take them off, then you can Ever, and he nailed the turbans to the Ottomans' heads. Hmm. So he was like sick and twisted, torture, gross. Mm -hmm. And like, while they were impaled, they were still alive, as we know it. It's a very mm -hmm. slow, painful, could take days, could take weeks. Ugh. I know, I know. I can't wait to talk about the impaling part because that's horrific. <laughs> I never edited that for that note either. <laughs> I read through it and I was like, oh, that's good, Kat. That was really good. I don't know how I'm going to, I'm going to have to put this very politely without using, you know, certain... lower extremities. Okay. We'll just say lower extremities. God. Um, so what is impaling? Um, I, I'm going to be honest and tell you that I didn't know that they would use the butthole. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, I'm just being honest. Like, I, I just, yeah. you know, like, I, I mean, you know, I just, I mean, I would assume that that's an entrance, but like, you know, I just <laughs> didn't know that was what would be particularly used. You know what I mean? Like, wow. Well, it's funny because, well, it's not funny. I should say it's funny. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> it's and not bad. I'm funny. Sorry. And telling people is not funny, folks. <laughs> Jesus. Um, but I was actually shocked that they used, it was like a rounded tip. <laughs> Are you I getting was, that specific okay, right now? I didn't mean to say, say like weird, but I was just saying like you think of like steaks, you know? And like, you know, like being impaled, like I always thought that they were just like sharp sticks, like yeah. you would kill like a vampire mm -hmm. with, you know what I mean? I can't like, believe we're having so this when I read conversation. It, I was like, no. Okay, Bye. well, we're going to get specific here. So if you hear <laughs> squeamish. You don't have to say the next one, okay? Bye. I'm sorry, I just can't <laughs> stop. Whew. Okay, oh, I'm crying, literally. I'm going to mess up my vampire makeup. Okay, whew. this is this is what happens Whoa. when we're on set. You know, like, sometimes you just can't take things serious because it's just like, who thinks of this shit, man? Like, no. who sits around no. and they're like, you know what, what kind of object should we use? Should it be pointed, round, or square? Like, literally, you know? Like, what about square. a triangle? Yeah. You know? Let's do an octagon, actually. You know what's really interesting that, and that's funny is... Um, it's sick so that we find like humor in this. I am so <laughs> sorry, everybody. It's not funny. We're just... I don't know. Oh, God. Maybe it's awkward, and that's why we're laughing. Elfie but, just um, said, it takes longer and does less damage as it works its way up. <laughs> <laughs> oh god i need a kleenex i literally just i'm crying right now like i just oh my god i'm not gonna get through this stream oh my god i love the comment that someone left that we were going off to dinner in the middle of the conversation oh my god i'm surprised that we have a youtube channel after this jesus I'm Whoa. trying not to. Oh, God, I can't see. It got, like, mascara in my eye. Okay. Um, no, but seriously, I do think it, like, <laughs> I want to say it's important to talk about, but, like, <laughs> I feel like it is. Because I'm dead serious. When I was reading through the notes, because Elfie, like, loves her research, too, you know? Like, she's yeah, like, bam. Um, like, I really... Um, I really didn't know they went through the booty hole. Honestly, I know that sounds stupid, but, like, I don't know. You don't, I don't know. If you're impaling, does it really matter if you go through the butthole or not? Honest to God, it doesn't matter. 
Why do you want a, like a small field of like writhing bodies on a rounded pole? Okay, I just feel like that's really <laughs> God, <laughs> Jesus, just say it. LP uh, said they they want them alive for as long as possible. That's that's messed up. Would it go all the way through the head or just like center okay. body? You know what I mean? It so would exit. I'm just gonna read verbatim the notes, y'all. So if you're squeamish, this is your disclaimer. The exit wound is how the notes were written. Ew, Could the be neck. near near the victim's neck, shoulders, or mouth. Damn, that's some force, man. Like that's some Ed Gein shit right there. You Why know what I mean? It's not funny. It's not funny. It's that's fine. messed up. Like that. Well, that would take more than one person, wouldn't it? I mean, I would think so. But it says okay. It says entrance would go through. Uh, the the booty hole or or the vagigi, but w so they would send <laughs> women in there too. I don't understand. That doesn't sound right. Like yeah, men and women, merchants, what? townspeople. Back then, women wouldn't be okay. Merchants and townspeople, okay. Because I would say back then, I don't think women would really be allowed to be, uh, you know, in the militia or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. He would go into the town, and and pick them out. Oh, Elfie's going into some deets here. I just don't know if I can handle it. She says, didn't even get in the angle of how it's stacked. It's placed in the ground. You want it to be in an angle for gravity to take, and it would take days. Oh, so they just kind of, like, slowly... Ew. Okay, well, That's just... just God, Elfie, thank we're you not. so much for your... Thank you for the visual. That answered that question. So in, um, in some cases, the pole was rounded, not sharp, avoid um, to avoid damaging organs... So that there would be prolonged suffering. Wow, that's dark shit, man. Some dark shit. The pole was vertically raised to display the victim's torment. It could take days, hours, or even weeks for the person to die. Wow, man, that's just... That was a rough two... That was a rough paragraph. That was literally a paragraph, and I feel like it took a year to get through that thing. You know what I mean? I'm like hot! I'm like hot! <laughs> Jesus. I'm empathing. I feel like I'm empathing. I know. What What do you think would happen if we went there and like investigated? Let's do it. No, I mean, but I mean like <laughs> empathing it. I don't know how I'd feel. I know it'd just be uncomfortable. It'd just be very uncomfortable. Uh, I don't know, man. I'd be like, this is this is just messed up. This is a whole nother level of messed up. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're um, a dark person. Yeah, okay, so let's let's move forward for a minute, because I'm just having a moment, because that was rough, you know, like, <laughs> talking about the boots and all that. Elfie said, sorry, I know way too much about this. <laughs> we love you, Elfie, for that. We love, love that you... you, so you much. Yeah, she nerds out on our research, and we love it. Okay, Vlad's death. <clears throat> so, um, here it says, not long after the impalement of the Ottoman prisoners, um, in August... 1462, Vlad was forced into exile mm -hmm. in Hungary, unable to defeat his much more powerful adversary. Um, mm -hmm. So he ended up getting the boot. So he got in trouble because they were like, well, that's like, that's scary to any culture, right? I mean, they're looking at this guy like news spreads fast across the land of like, Holy shit! You know what I mean? Like this guy is dangerous. We need to like get in control of him, because if yeah. he's able to take this whole sort of like clan out or culture, whatever you want to call it back then, militia, what could he do to the rest of us? So I'm sure that there was like some major fear going on, not just in like Romania. Well, I'm sure the in Romania they, I don't think he was killing his own people, so they probably felt fine. Right. But well, but when merchants involved. Mm-hmm. No matter what side, I mean, I I would be concerned too. Yeah, well, yeah, because you know? you're just don't. Well, even women, you know, not that I'm playing the women card, but I always play the women card. But like, what? Why are you? You know, I don't I don't get it. Once again, he should have gone for the person or persons responsible for his death. I don't know why he went on this killing spree. Give me the number again that he murdered. He wrote in his letter. It was twenty. 23, he wrote, we killed 23,884 Turks. Wait, say that again slower. 23,884 23, Turks. That's a lot of bodies, man. That's a lot of bodies. And he said, without counting those whom we burned in homes, 
or the Turks whose heads were cut by our soldiers. Then he wrote, thus, thus, your highness, you must know that I've broken the peace. But it's true. If the townspeople were talking about, like, the smell of death, can you imagine if they're just dead bodies all over the place? Mm-hmm. And how, like, what do you do with that many, 20, what do you do with it? I don't even know. You'd have to make, even... like, a mass grave, but it would still be stanky. Burn them. I mean, I've seen enough, you know, true crime documentaries that it's just, like, one is bad enough times 20,000 that probably made all of Romania. Don't you think that that makes, like, a, a permanent stain on the whole country? Oh my gosh, yeah. You know what I mean? With that many people being murdered on the land, like, it makes you wonder if there's just, like, this permanent, like, ectoplasm stain that just causes strange trauma throughout the whole country. Because that does, that's a lot of people, and that doesn't just, like, go away. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's true. I'm, I'm curious, um, the haunts that are there. Oh, I bet you, like, the whole freaking country is haunted with that. Because not only, you're not only adding the 23,000 people, but imagine the people living in the country have absolute fear on him. They're scared of him and afraid of him. So now that's right. also creating energy. Oof. You know what it's I mean? Like one- it is it's all like amplified almost like create like i think that kind of energy is what creates like portals and like weird stuff you know what i mean so somebody saved the dogs damn it (laughs) that's all i care about the dogs i don't know why i thought about this but there is um a van helsing movie Mm -hmm. oh yeah a ton of van helsing movies Mm -hmm. but there's one in particular with hugh jackman Mm -hmm. that is actually extremely accurate to what transylvania would have looked like during blood's rain hmm. um and it, it did like they did they had like animals running around and um you know townsfolk just being really riddled with fear and things like that but that's a really good movie to watch i've seen all of those are good I, i've also seen dark shadows of Don- johnny depp is hilarious it's one of my faves oh, love it but i like the, the comical stuff especially after we just talked about you know impaling booty holes all right <laughs> carrying on to the next oh Oh, wait elfie said that if you really are interested in like you know the vlad stuff check out the inquisition torture or you will squirm i think i'll pass on that elfie but i'll let people make the decision if that's what they want to watch eat some popcorn watch inquisition torture you know what i'm saying oh it's weird though because i do that with true crime docs don't you like i'll be like oh, it's like 10 o'clock at night, I should go to sleep, or I should, like, watch something to help me go to bed, and then I turn on some massacre, like, you know, documentary, and I'm sitting there eating popcorn, and I'm just like, this is great, you know? I don't know. This is in the background. You're just like, oh, nice. Okay, so let's keep going here. um, So he went into exile. He was in prison, essentially, for uh, a lot, a long time. And then he ended up marrying somebody. Who would the hell would marry him after that? That was messed up. What's wrong with That's you, gross. girl? I need to have a talk with you. <laughs> it's nasty. What are you thinking, boo? You think he, I mean, I hate to say it, but I feel like with this kind of trauma that he did with 20,000, 20,000 strangers, he was probably into domestic violence and stuff. And he D- had two kids. Yeah, I bet he was abusive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like anybody that's like, that does dark stuff like that's got to be into like domestic violence and abuse that's just crazy nasty who knows we didn't really there's really not a lot on like the wife or the kids either it's almost like they didn't want to be known for like imagine like you do like your ancestry dna and you're like oh my eighth generation grandpa is vlad the impaler like i don't think everybody wants to go around like bragging about that you know what i mean generational trauma you gotta freaking <laughs> yeah. okay, break of that jeez okay so 1746 um vlad made one more effort to try to um get his seat as another as, as the ruler the same ruler or is this a different area um different different it's all different okay and then he, he chopped the head off of the other one and he stole a rain from this person mm-hmm. but it was like not long that he had that rain um and then now he's going to battle again with the Ottomans. Yeah. So he cannot let this shit go. He can't stop. He can't stop. He's like wanting to like genocide, exterminate these people. Yep. Okay. 
But it's kind of crazy, though, because that was his last one. He ended up being ambushed and murdered. Jesus, thank God. Somebody <laughs> stop this man. <laughs> I'm exhausted, Who Vlad. Did did they get a statue? Because I'm just saying, that was, that's some dark stuff right there. I am exhausted. Your journey exhausted me. That was too much shit, okay? Whew, gosh. Okay, so supposedly he's in a tomb somewhere. Yeah. And this is in that church that's in uh, Romania, right? Yeah. But but, but it's it's unconfirmed. It's not confirmed. It's like maybe it, he's it there, maybe he's not. Um, they also think that he was buried in like a monastery church. Mm -hmm. And I really doubt that. I really doubt yeah, that. Yeah, what priest is going to be like, "Yeah, bring him on in," you know? He'd be damned. <laughs> the that. priest would be like, "I don't want to go to hell." Okay? Like mm -hmm. we can't bring no. him here. That land is, is cursed. <laughs> Jesus. It just was bad. He had a rough, he had a rough life, okay? But, like, even historians have done work with, like, you know, um, anthropology. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, yeah, we, it's, it's questionable that he's actually where he is. No one really knows where he could be. Um, and yeah. once again, it could be for a number of reasons. Maybe they didn't carry good records back then. Maybe his family didn't want people to know where he was buried because of the shit he did. Yeah. I had even heard some claims that when he was murdered in battle, that they just left his body there and just brought the message back. And he was like, you know, he died at the field he was murdered on. See, that would make sense to me. I don't know who would, like, you know what I mean? Like, especially if it was a, it was already a battle. Yeah. So then what happens? Like, okay, we killed the leader. The war's over and everybody just go home. Everybody go home now. Like, it's Done. Like, what happens in those instances? Especially that was probably, like, on horses and shit, right? Like, it was, like, old school wars. You do. You're just like, okay, well... That was it. We're done. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank, thank God he's Bye. taken care of. Let's just, you know, we're done. Well, it, and even then there was probably more than him. And this is how my brain works, you know, like thinking of a battle. There's probably hundreds of people dead. How would you go through hundreds of bodies to try to find Vlad, the leader? Of course, he's the leader, so I'm sure some people may have done it. But, like, yeah, you, you know, I don't even how far away were they? Would they have really wanted to trek back? on horse or buggy or whatever they had with a dead body and like to get back you know who knows i don't know that sounds a little ridiculous to me not I mean, saying yeah. it couldn't happen but especially after like the the crimes that he's obviously been able to commit up until this point i think that he's probably got uh most mass murder um on the planet at this point yeah yeah i'd say so i don't know I'd... that's a lot of people man you know what i mean like whoa a lot a lot of people i mean he was just broken. He's just a very broken man. So, assumably, it says historians have, are assuming that he, he his body was basically left at the battle. That's what history yeah. because they they can't really trace it. So, maybe his family made a memorial where like the church was or something mm -hmm. or the monastery. You know what I mean? Maybe that or maybe maybe the, a building. Maybe there's maybe he they did something inside the castle like who who knows right like who knows not long ago the castle um in romania was up for sale i saw it pop up on my facebook feed it was like it could it was within the last 12 months um i think they were hurting because of like covid coronavirus you know all that so i don't want to say that word in case gets shadow banned on youtube we've had enough of that um we don't want to go backwards and um they somebody did end up buying it Wow, I have to look into that. But I can't, I don't know what it sold for. I, I wasn't going to do like the uh, coin distinguish of like American dollars. You know what I mean? So right. Bram Stoker, we want to talk about that too. Yes. So I'm going to let you do this because you know more about it than I do. Okay. Um, so Abraham Bram Stoker was born um, in November on in 1847 <clears throat> in Dublin in Ireland. Which actually, that's pretty cool because they have a lot of like folk there too so mm. him being just such a creative person we're um, both irish too yep mm -hmm. yep i'm irish and scottish those are my biggest next next to um my native american is irish and scottish really mm -hmm. oh oh yeah you did tell me about scottish yeah my family my great grandmother was off the boats from ireland we were part of the callahan clan i uh, see i haven't traced anything yet on my irish side but i was a part of a uh, a crest from Germany and Pru we were my family's actually originally from Prussia 
which is like oof, wow. like old school yeah and and we ah. so yeah my maiden name was linked to to prussia and it was a we have i have a crest <clears throat> that i have wow yeah and our family awesome. came over on the boats so like my my maiden name was like it's there's a ton of people with my maiden name on the East Coast because they came over on the boats from Prussia. But yeah, so that's cool about yours though from from Ireland. I'd love to go to Ireland and um, Scotland someday, especially like it's haunted. It's old. To uh, I have a friend that lives in Scotland. He's like, it's haunted <clears throat> heck over here, and they have so, all the original buildings. You know. That's crazy. Um, the pubs. Oh my god, that'd be so fun. Oh my gosh. I'd be partying and wasted like the whole time. Like I can't I get a pint. Uh, literally, I can't investigate. I'm drunk. I have to stay here and like party with my people. You know what I mean? Like experience. It's fine. It's be- <laughs> 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 it was another day job. But don't right. drink in Paris. Really, don't. No, I would not do that. No. I I have um, done that before. It's dangerous. So <laughs> We live and learn, folks. Okay. I, I've we talked about it. I I don't don't I drink at the Stanley Hotel, uh, and that was a huge mistake because I was like, I can see shit now. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I my I want my filter back. I don't want to see this shit. You know what I mean? Leprechauns and shit. Go ahead, carry on. Sorry. Uh, uh, uh. Um, not the leprechauns. Those are scary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The ass things about. Anyway, um, so Bram Stoker was uh, known as the author of Dracula. So maybe, was that the author you were talking about earlier? Yes, yep. Why? Was it? Yeah, okay, okay. 18, 1847. Why was... I thought it was older than that. I don't know why. No, I don't know. Yeah, 1847 is when he was born, and then he died in 1912. But yeah, because I remember when he started doing the research on it, it was in London, I'm pretty sure. Mm-hmm. When he was doing the research, he was trying to find, he was like a creative author and he was trying to find inspiration. He found out about Vaud and he mm-hmm. was in England when he found out. So yeah, this is, I, why did I brain fart that? Anyway, carry on. I did it's fine. <laughs> We're brain it's, you know what? Out. It's the impaling, okay? okay? <laughs> cool. So so it really messed me up today, man. Oh, like, God. <clears throat> um, so Stoker was uh, the manager of a really famous theater in his area and personal assistant to the owner and famous actor at that time, Sir Henry Irving. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so uh, one of the rumored inspirations of Dracula was Sir Irving. Um, view, viewed himself as a centered, self-centered and charismatic character that wanted to like be in control of everything. So that kind of is what is, is said that Brahm, you know, inspiration Dracula over, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. But then later finding out about Vlad. Mm-hmm. Um, Stoker looked up to Irving in awe, um, you know, with his mesmerizing figure. I mean, he was really famous. God, 18, 1897, the book Dracula comes out. I bet he had no idea that it was going to, like... I mean, at the time, people probably weren't really that into it. Because that's the scene with, like, Edgar Allan Poe and... Mm-hmm. Um, oh, what's our other favorite one? That uh, did Cthulhu. What's his name? Uh, Love Lovecraft. They yeah. weren't popular at the time, and it took till like the 1900s for him to really take off. And it's just yeah. crazy. I bet he had no idea the inspiration and like it was going to create of like it's really part of our our modern day culture now is all this Dracula stuff. It's everywhere. We are kind of shaped it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Created oh. it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um. Let's see here. Yeah. So Stoker's a great great nephew carried on the legacy of Dracula um, Stoker, uh, what he wrote in 2009, actually, called Dracula the Undead. Hmm. So that was his great, great nephew, um, based on handwritten notes. From Brom, wow. Hmm. Yeah, and um, this is a sequel to Brom's um, 19- 1897, that was the year, okay. 1897, um, book of Dracula. Um, and he has also released Brahms Lost Dublin Journal with the help of Dracula scholar Elizabeth Miller. So that's really cool. Hmm. I'd love to look her up. Um, and he toured and did lectures called uh, Stoker on Stoker. Is he that's still great. alive? I wonder. It's interesting. This is the great nephew. Well, yeah, if he's a great nephew, he's probably alive still. So. I would assume so. Hmm. Really interesting. I'll have to look it up. Yeah. But very cool. God, who would have thunk just, like, getting inspiration to write something about a creepy horror theme would turn into such a, such a big deal. It's true. It's literally created, like, I feel like 
that alone created what vampire culture is today. Like, when I say the line of the people that live that line, like, I feel like this was, this is their inspiration, which is just interesting. It's really interesting. It really is. It really is. How it all ends up coming kind of full circle, mm-hmm. you know, for sure. Transylvania. I just think that's such a cool name. Just, isn't it? Like, I feel like that's, like, that embodies, like, just the idea of, like, gothic is, like, Transylvania. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, It says here, too, um, on the bottom of what inspired Dracula, it was also claimed that Stoker had an interest in Irish folklore, which, I mean, duh. I mean, anyone would, I guess, right? Because, I mean, that's what they grow up with. Mm -hmm. Um, And the character of Dracula was based on a Celtic chieftain who was buried in the town and visit the grave today that's just so dark man what he did Mm. vlog Mm -hmm. that is um this was something i found interesting um one of his little experts of what vlog wrote he Mm -hmm. wrote this to a military alley in 1462 i've killed peasants men and women old and young uh where the Danube flows into the sea. I assume that's like this the little river that was there. We killed 23,884 Turks without counting those who burned in homes with um, or the Turks' heads that were cut off by our soldiers. Thus, your highness, you must know that I have broken the peace. He was clearly educated. Very, he very smart. I'm telling you, like, he knew how to into even the enemy, mm-hmm. you know? And it is just... That's scary mm-hmm. when you have someone of that like that intelligence um, that could wreak as much havoc as he did, for sure. Because I'm sure it seemed to a lot of people that he would have just lived forever, you know, which it would just never end, just never end. So I can't even imagine what it must have felt like being in those times and hearing that he was finally, he died. Okay, so then we have to get to another dark spot, which is, um, is this part did kind of gross me out just because, like, I don't like, I don't, I, you know, we had, like, the Church of Satan negotiation last week, and I pissed off some Satan. It's, hey, girl, hey. And <laughs> that's because I don't like humans being tortured. I don't like animals being tortured, especially animals and children, like, I'm a huge advocate for. Um, but, like, really dark stuff, like, real-life dark stuff, like, I don't like. I mean, like, I'll watch, like, you know, a true crime documentary, but, like, that's different between like this guy was just messed up man so one of the things he did was he would dip his uh, so where did the vampire thing come from right yes he did consume the blood of his enemies um he dipped his bread in the blood of his victims which was one thing it's claimed he's also bathed in the blood of his victims at at some point right and sometimes he would even just like go up to him while they were dying and like wipe the blood off and just lick his fingers in front of them basically What's that? Boo, you got some issues. You need some Jesus or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> Two alternatives to getting some help. <laughs> what did you say? Therapy and I said Jesus? Therapy. Yeah. I, I think you need both, Vlad. Like, really. Like, I wonder what went, ha- like, what wow. happened when he went home and, like, he's in front of judgment, whatever happens. And you're they're like, look, dude, you messed up really bad. Like, <laughs> We need to fix you before you can ever reincarnate again. Like you're really I, bad. I wonder how who he would incarnate as reincarnate as. Probably Hitler. Oh my god. <laughs> it could be. That just got real dark real quick. <laughs> well Probably. the timing could be right, you know? You're talking about nineteen forties or whatever, nineteen twenties. Wow. So I mean, yeah, he was really dark. I was messed up. I'm All just saying stuff. somebody needs a lot of Jesus here. I don't know. It makes you wonder what what goes through the heads of these people that they're just they they can wipe everybody out, man? Nothing. I, I literally <laughs> Nothing. anything there. It's gone. It's just fizzed out. Fizzed out. Um, pop culture. Oh my God. There's so much. Like there's so much. Everything's literally. Nosferatu. Oh, Nosferatu's in here. Everything's awesome. inspired by Va- Dracula. Like literally, just think about it. 1922 was Nosferatu. 1931, Dracula, pre-code movie and first sound movie of Dracula, starred Bella Lugosi. Oh, this entry, Stalker, uh, Stoker, sorry, Stalker, that's a mood. Um, Stoker sued for copyright infringement since some of the films had started with the Dracula movie, so that's interesting. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. One copy survived a mass destruction, and it was on its way to the U.S. for t- public domain from, like, the original copies. That's interesting. Wow. Hmm. Wow. The biggest change from the book to the movie was his destruction by sunlight. Mm-hmm. Whereas in the book of Dracula, he's just weakened by it, not destroyed by it. Hmm. So that's interesting. Hmm. Bella Lugosi, obviously, we know as as one of the famous yep. characters of of Dracula. Hmm. I was never into that that one though. I've I've watched no. that one, but I was I don't know why. I don't know. It just seemed more gentle compared to other ones. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I'm reading here. He had to learn the lines phonetically because he didn't really know that much of English. Mm-hmm. So he was pretty much just typecast because he looked like Dracula. Wow. And he was kind of screwed for the rest of his career because they only just saw him as Dracula. Wow. And Bella Lugosi's, when they did this, obviously, 1931, Universal Studios paid $40,000 for the novel stage play. Wow. 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 That's not a lot yeah. of money compared to day and age. You know what I mean? Not at all. Not at all. Hmm. Wow, yeah, he was on the stage play in Europe and Broadway and happened to be in L.A. in a touring company hmm. during the counting. Very interesting. That is yeah. crazy. So Vlad's, Vlad's messed up. The moral <laughs> of the story is Vlad is one effed up dude. And don't impale people. And, and don't eat their, drink their blood, okay? Don't Ew. dip your bread in blood, okay? That's wrong. I've had, like, IVs given to me and, like, I can't, I, can you smell blood? I can no. They say not everybody can, but I can. Probably because I'm a vampire. It's fine. But not this kind. Okay? Let's get that straight. Um, but, yeah, like, when I get IVs, I can smell blood. I'm really weird. So, wow. I, I, that makes me sick. Like, I can't, ex- I, I, it's iron. I can't really explain how it smells. You just know yeah. it. And um, it's because I, when I was little, I was really sick. So, I had a lot of IVs. So, I think it just from doing it so much. And just yeah. that, that scent stays in your brain. And to think of, like, somebody <sniffs> ingesting that, ooh, that's a no for me. You know what I mean? It's a little Olive Garden bread in there, you know what I'm saying? That's actually what I am in. That's what I imagined. <laughs> it was like they're, well, or what's, what's the restaurants where they put, like, olive oil mixed with, like, some freaking herbs and just, like, dip the bread in, you know what I mean? When I was yeah. reading about it, I was like, dude, this is, like, not a five-star restaurant. You know what I mean? Like, um, to front someone yard. Talk, someone talked about on um, YouTube that the Ghost Adventures crew went, and that they were told by many that Vlad was considered um, a hero. A hero. And, and he was, um, because he was fighting off the Ottomans. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, Back we yeah. have a blurb on it which i skipped over and the blurb was that you know yeah on his own land he was seen as a hero but really are you telling me like if you weren't living in romania and that wasn't happening you wouldn't have some sort of fear if you like did anything wrong moved or walked wrong you wouldn't be the next one mm. i'm just saying like if if there's one person that's capable of like doing this to 20 over 20,000 people like you're going to you're going to have some fear. Like, you're going to be weary of your surroundings. You know what I mean? I'm sure starting out, it might have seemed like that. Um, but the impaling didn't start until a few years into him regaining his father's seat. Um, which, I don't even know. Because, like, I don't know how you would compute that in your brain. So I feel like a part of, part of people might have been like, oh, our enemies are on stakes or whatever. But then the other half of it is like, okay, you're going a little too extra here, right? You just put some merchants up on there. Or it was like, he, you know, before the impaling started, oh, this guy deserves his his crown back. Well, obviously this is speculation because we don't really know. Right. But oh, he, oh, he's protecting us from these people. He deserves his crown back. And then he gets his crown back. And then now we're starting these like really violent deaths. But like, it doesn't matter. I just, I would, as a citizen, be really concerned, like, that that's d- dark dark nasty well like they said they had the smell of death in the city how could you be i don't want olive garden bread anymore that's, <laughs> now. that's not where you dip it in they don't give you olive oil okay i'm just saying i'm trying I'm to saying. think where you get that at does any i don't know now i'm, now I'm gonna be bothered by that all day no yep. <laughs> anyway well 
Now we found something else about impaling. You know what I'm saying? Okay, Elfie said Bram Stoker's Dracula from 1993 with Gary Oldman was closer to the book, um, and they upped the romantic part. Yeah, what is what is with romance with, with vampires? Because that's my thing, man. Yeah. Like, I love the vampire room. And not like, you know, like I said, I think Bella needed a freaking backbone in Twilight. Like, don't get me wrong. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But um, even in Van Helsing, right? Like, doesn't he have, like, three vampire wives or something? Not that I'm into, like... Dracula. Dracula does, yeah. Not that I'm into freaking, uh, what is that called? Polygamy? No, that's a no yeah. from me. Um, <laughs> that doesn't work for me. But um, I'm way too territorial. I could never <laughs> share. No, nope. there'd be a bitch fights going on constantly. Um, <laughs> someone's yeah, gonna die. Go, like, oh, you're gonna die. <laughs> um, but what is it with the romance of vampires? Like, really, like, what is that? I almost wonder from a history standpoint if it's because of the blank you know part of history of not knowing Dracula's Vlad's wife mm-hmm. that was you know and the kids that they had and all of that so maybe it was more like a glamorized version of what it might have been like behind the scenes but I mean I don't think that's how it goes okay well it's it putting people on sticks okay it was a little messed up it's not just that though i think like like just i mean okay when i was in high school like if you're backing it up a minute i was not like i'm a little on like the alternative edgy side i was alternative for sure like i was very like gwen stefani alternative like the skater pants with like the like um uh, you know the straps hanging down and like um you know so i was into like the alternative side of fashion but there was like some hardcore goths in the 90s too of like the liberty spikes and like mohawks and like the dark makeup and like all black and the chains around the neck so i i've never been that goth there's different sections of goth but i feel like all alternative goth culture is into the the vampire romance stuff Mm -hmm. i'm 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 into it like i love it you know what i mean like and i don't even know what is it like it makes you want is it the mystery Cat, are you being mysterious? Is that your way of being mysterious? Yeah. <laughs> no, like, like, think about it. Like, what's your favorite, like, vampire romance? Like, even with, if you like Jacob, if you even team Jacob, it's the same genre. You know what I mean? Of, like, yeah. of, like, um, <laughs> bestiality. Don't say, that's not what I meant to say. That's what I was trying not to say, because it's not a thing, okay? <laughs> oh, my God. Um, I meant, like, that's not what I meant. Um... <laughs> It's but like <laughs> it's lots of disclaimers today. Yeah, there's we're having some issues pulling words together. It's been a long three weeks. I'm really glad we're here publicly right now, laying ourselves Woo! out there. Um, God bless. No, <laughs> <laughs> shit, cat. Um, I no, I'm looking for the word, but it is. It's like mysterious, mysterious. Um, the unknown, the dark, the edgy. Um, like, like Edward got made fun of a lot and and I'm not like denying that like Edward was kind of like sketch, you know what I mean? Like he's a little sketch cause he's like, you know, gonna kill Bella when she walks in the classroom because you know, he can smell her or whatever. Like I would punch a guy in the throat. Okay. Just so you know, (laughs) what's wrong with you? (laughs) If I was Bella sitting there, I would have backhanded him like halfway into class. What's wrong with you? Get a backbone. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> Everyone needs a backbone, okay? <laughs> Everybody from Twilight needs a backbone. It's fine. But, like, people make fun of Edward because he's, like, so serious and dramatic. And you're right. He is. But that, I feel like that's the, like, the quiet, serious, dramatic side. Vampire <laughs> image is, like, creepy is, like, the attractiveness. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know why. And then me with Jacob, I'm like, just take your shirt off. <laughs> it's fine. Go on a beach. It's fine. Go on the beach? Is that what you said? Why the beach? Yeah. Well, because there's like that scene with Jacob and Bella, and they're on the beach. But he doesn't have his shirt take on. Kiss it off. Wait, which scene is that? I'll send it to you later. <laughs> Jesus Lord. God. It's really a long life, you guys. God, it's fine. I, I don't know. El- <laughs> Elfie's sitting here trying to like pull us together. She's like giving us data. Like, here, guys, it's gonna be okay. No, it's, it's the not bad Elfie. Boy it's... Um, what did she say? Is that what she said? It's the bad boy image. Yeah. Okay, bad boy image. But like, there is a difference between a bad boy and a dangerous boy. And I feel like Vlad's definitely the dangerous kind. <laughs> you should stay away from that. <laughs> 
not go near no 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 Hmm. I was gonna say don't go near him with the ten foot pole, and then it got really dark after I said that, and I did not mean to be a pun. Okay, uh, that was just. Oh fine. my god, we're messed up, man. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how we have fans. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. That or like everyone's at home like rolling with us. That's what I hope, or else they think we're just sick. You know what I mean? Oh my gosh, I really hope so. <laughs> Um, anything else you want to add to it? But yeah, like the vampire romance stuff is my thing. It's my gig. In fact, there was something that popped up the other day. One of my friends sent me on social media, um, and it's a new book series. Um, that's like a new vampire um, book series. So I need, I was going to order one on Amazon. Is it, um, there's a book out that's from Stephanie Meyer that's, uh, I was it Jacob. Edward's Jacob version. Edward's version, yeah. <laughs> Cat's a little flabbergasted because of Jacob today. We shouldn't have brought him up. Um, Take your boo, it's fine. Oh my god, I'm dead. Um, no, I'm looking for the book title because I have it in my Amazon cart saved. I can't remember, I... but I think I gotta get that one. I want to read that one. Okay, it's called it's called Crave, which I don't know could be a little you know on the naughty side. I'm not sure, but anyway, um, it's a van- Crave by uh, Tracy Wolf W O L F F. It's 11. Ah, I love it. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'll order it and let you guys know if it's if it's good or not. I've heard it's a lot like Twilight, but like two point, like not a lot of people complained about Twilight because it was a little, it was young. It's supposed to be about young love, you know what I mean? Like, it's true, it's a good, it's good though. Well, and what high schooler isn't dramatic that you know? It's true. I mean, I was horribly, I was a drama queen. You were in drama, weren't you? It's true. Yeah. So, just waiting on Jacob. I don't know a Jacob. I know a lot of Native American guys. But I hate to tell you that they don't look like Jacob, so I'm sorry. It's all right. Sorry. sorry. I can't can't help you there. You know what I mean? It's all right. I'll just read the books. Someday we're going to go to Forks. I mean, it was filmed in Portland in areas of Portland, but I'd love to make, like, a road trip up there and, like, the whole area. Yes. Uh god it'd be so fun well I just love raining all the time do you see I'm, I, I'm afraid i'd be like i mean i like the rain for sure but like i need some like heat as well i mean hence i live in a desert you know what i mean and rainy and dark 24 7 see i think Good. that would make me depressed i'm scared i love it because there's like i mean not you know i just like it because it's like relaxing well i also have my jeep though and i like to take like the top off the jeep and like drive around you know what i mean you yeah. can't do that in the rain. You could put, like, makeshift umbrellas. You could put, like, a little umbrella hat. <laughs> just like, an umbrella hat. like, umbrella hats, and you're just like, merp. Mer- it's fine. Oh, my God. Well, <laughs> I think we've That's done enough odd. damage today. You know what I mean? That's true. It's been a good stream. It's a good stream. No, it was. It was fun. Because, like, Re- and I should have called it, I think I'm going to change the title. Because I think it, rather than Vlad the Impaler, like, I really wanted to talk about just, like, the overall discussion of, like, how much vampire pop culture and lore has like taken I love it I yeah. love I'm into it I dig I love the vampire stuff without the Vlad thing without the polygamy thing without the whole eating blood thing like I'm into all of it you know what I mean I don't like yeah. the, the dark side of it and like the real consort thing like would you ever be a consort cat no Ugh. no I would all slap sense. the shit out of somebody if they tried to do that like right me. Get, get, the hell out of here. <laughs> get the hell out of here no hate on people to do that just not my thing you know what i mean mm-hmm. so well no. thank you guys so much for being here with our ridiculousness um cat and i you know get carried away sometimes it's fun i like how elfie and i when we stream she's so like on the books of like bam 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 like she's so like thorough and you and I are like, let's just float away. Oh, let's just everything. Let's go on the beach, you know? Great. Oh yeah, she's still thinking about uh, Jacob. Everybody, <laughs> Jesus, cat. Wasn't he dating um, uh, Princess Leia's granddaughter or daughter? I don't know. I don't know. He was for a while. I just think I just remind. He reminds me of when he was Spy Kids. Okay, Elfie just said also to tr- uh, to try and fix the broken tough guy. The immortality helps too. Yeah, that's true. The immortality true. is an image of the vampire too, for sure. Yeah. I don't know if I'd want to be forever on this planet though, man. Like I'm, I'm not coming back here. This is a shithole. <laughs> I'm just saying. 
it's, a, it's a rough place to be, man. You know what I'm saying? It is. It's been a rough, a rough one, but you know, we got through it. I told you, Kat, I didn't want to come back here. And you were like, not it's going to be look, fine. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. We're not in the 1400s. <laughs> we're not getting impaled. You know? So, like, it's a good time. Let's look at the good Bye. side of this. Let's look at the positive side of this positive. here. Okay? We're in a panini, but, you know, it's fine. Oh, my you God. Know, the Rona. I'm tired. I need a vacation. <laughs> yeah. I, I need a vacation from Earth. Is anybody up there wanting to take me on a vacation? Like, I better not say that. Don't don't wish that. Look, I don't have don't. time to be abducted, okay? Don't even think about it with your alien craft, all right? They're on their way over. They're like, what? Well, what do you want? Like, you want no? <laughs> no. Uh, no. Oh, my God. All right, guys. Thank you so much for putting up with Kat and I. We appreciate you guys. Make sure you give us a follow on social media. We will be back. That's, that's next week. I don't even know what the topic is next week. I'm so bad. There will be like it's, 8 million Anyway, tabs yeah. It's now. with Elfie next week. And uh, make sure you guys take care. Have a good weekend. Make sure you're following us on social media. Go read some vampire shit. Or, like, go watch something. Because now I'm, now I'm going to watch vampire shit all weekend. It's true. Now Kat's going to go look up Jacob pictures and change the background on her phone. You know, the usual. Thanks, guys, so much. As always, we'll catch you guys next time. Bye, Bye. guys. Back, back, back from the dead.